Hey bro, you want to learn animation? You really want to learn animation? Here, make sure you have a copy of the Animator Survival Kit by Dick Williams. Then make sure you put it carefully between your cheeks. You know, make sure it's all snug and fit. Just push it in for more comfort. Then you're gonna jump in the sky and land butt first. So here we go. <laughs> well, oh my god, oh my god, I'll stop. Oh no, no, wait, wait, wait. The knowledge, I see it. I, I've been enlightened, I see the truth. Oh my god. Get me out of here, you idiots. Animation was a mistake. It hurts, the pain. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Sidney Kumantua, and today I'd like to talk about the many ways and venues one could learn how to animate and overall animation production. Besides, how do I start animation being a common question, another common question I get is where can I learn how to animate? Throughout my lifetime experience of learning the craft, working in the industry, there are many ways that I have learned how to animate. I've actually been on this train for nearly over 15 years. Being self-taught as a teen in the Newgrounds community back in the day, to going to school for animation, and then actually working in the industry. And from that overall experience, everyone has gone through a different path to get to where they're at. Some had connections within the industry, so they already had an insider scoop, whereas some were completely self-taught by studying existing work. Some went to a full degree course for animation, and some took just workshop classes. Some people just absorb it through the soul and mentally, and some people like to take it up the butt. My journey of learning animation production and storyboarding is actually quite varied, and that credit doesn't just belong to one venue. The first one is assignment and exercise based. You follow a series of assignments and exercises ranging from the classics like the bouncing ball to full on character tests and performance. This is a classic way to learn animation and the benefits of this is you learn the fundamentals and basics one at a time with the earlier assignments introducing simple principles and then later on to more complex ones or you're utilizing multiple principles at once. It's a great way to focus and process on one new information at a time. Now the disadvantage to this is that it's not really the most creative or exciting since it's more about understanding the mechanics or how things work. So not many people are excited about doing this. Also, you can get stuck on the same principle for a long time without expanding that knowledge. Like some people beginning animation make the mistake of just sticking to the bouncing ball and then doing the waving flag and then suddenly just giving up. And honestly, I don't blame them. Assignments like that are easy to procrastinate, especially if you're just doing them on your own. But to tackle more challenging and creative assignments, like acting assignments, and you want to do a good job at it, you kind of have to know the basics. The basics Basic assignments like bouncing ball and pendulum exercises I wouldn't recommend putting on a reel for a job or an internship application. The next one is live classes, courses, or going to school, going to a degree. Pretty much a class with a teacher, of several sessions with fellow classmates. This includes an animation degree or if you're trying to save money, doing workshop style classes. Now the benefit I gained from this is being in that student body. It does something. You're in a class together so you can track each other's progress, do homework together. Some students can motivate you, you motivate each other, and most of the students have similar goals. During critique and comment, I love hearing criticism given from the teachers to other students because it reminds me of things that I should look for in my work or things that I would never see unless another person was doing it. But yeah, I like progressing together. Now the only downfall to this is that sometimes it can be really pricey and sometimes experience can be short-lived. Depending on the school and depending on the teacher, it can be a great class or a waste of money. And if the school and the teachers have some form of bad mentality, like saying anime is inferior, our school is the best, people who aren't in this class are unworthy, it creates a hive mindset for the students. So if the mindset is toxic, the students are also going to be toxic. And sometimes the school can basically fail you if they're not happy with the work that you're giving to them in an animation school and can hold your degree. Now, degrees aren't important to work in the field. You don't need a degree to work in a field, but it's probably a different story for someone who's international, a foreigner, where part of the requirement for a work visa is is having a degree. The next one is mentorship. So this one's a bit different from a normal class. It's being trained or mentored by one or a few people. Sometimes they'll give assignments or they're just there for guidance. And I guess a teacher counts, but I would say this is someone that has a more closer relationship with you in terms of work or in terms of tracking your education. Maybe this mentor checks up on you to see how you progress or kind of makes you do practices and assignments or points you in certain directions. 
Sometimes in school, you're given a mentor that could be a faculty member in a degree course, but usually I've had animation mentors. They're basically my animation teachers that I talk to after class and I would show extra work that I've been doing on the side. I treated them like they were my mentors. Some of my supervisors and coworkers are mentors for me too. Now the benefit to a mentorship is you get to really understand their work and thought process as they animate. And it's a lot more focused of learning animation where your growth is prioritized and it's also focused. If it's an animator you highly admire and you want to fully emulate, this is a great way to do so. So the cons of this is not all talented artists or animators are great mentors, and some of them can make you even more close-minded. Sometimes they'll want to force down their biases into yours. So you basically just become a carbon copy of this individual. Also, good mentors who are willing to do guidance for free are hard to find since most of them are very busy. And you'd be lucky to find a mentor that's really good at what they do that doesn't do it for profit. The next one is being involved in public online communities, being involved with forums, threads, discord groups, where everyone talks about animation, drawing, or whatever the hell you're interested in. This is actually how I started my journey in learning animation. And since then, there are many things that have changed and have not changed at all. And I'll make a separate video regarding online communities. So the pros to this is that it's a community and you can form either your own community or be a part of a community. You can form relationships, friendships. It's kind of like school but everyone's international, everyone's all over the place. You can collaborate on projects or do group study sessions together. You can participate in challenges and it's all free and interactive. This is a blessing for someone who lives in a place where animation or art is not a viable career choice and it opens more doors to them. People can share job opportunities and sometimes some of these people are actually in the industry currently. So you have that one-on-one -on -one interaction. Now the cons to this and even up to this day, there's still a lot of misinformation, not accurate facts and knowledge. And some of those misconceptions actually become toxic to the community. I've been in many of these online community groups and there's a lot of bloated egos and oftentimes drama. And sometimes it's so much and overwhelming, you don't really know where to start. The thing about these online communities is that they're not the perfect summarization or the representation of what people are actually like, especially in the industry. And that is something a teenager should know if that is their only world. The next one is reverse engineering. So this is someone that learns from studying existing materials. So breaking down an existing material and maybe recreating it for you to study. These include copying frames from either live action or existing work. For painters, they do a master study. I personally do this a lot when I want to subconsciously learn something without thinking too hard. However, some artists learn by tracing or rotoscoping existing material. Now, the benefits to this is that you can learn without actively thinking all the time. It's actually quite relaxing and freeing. You can also make little discoveries that you wouldn't really see in the first glance. And you learn all about how a certain artist solves a certain problem or how they would approach a certain topic or theme or an action. Now, the disadvantage to this approach is that you can't really put it up and claim it as your own unless you shot the reference on your own. You can become too dependent on heavy reference when you want to be able to animate something or make art without using any reference. And, and there will be a time where you want to make things with sheer imagination and not having to rely on any form of reference. The next one is learning on a job, you know, being hired or an intern in a studio where you're in that actual workplace environment, you're being a trainee, that also counts. I find ways to learn something new when I'm at a new job. Now the pros to this is you learn a bit more about the pipeline, what the job actually calls for, learning how to work as a team, while getting guidance from a supervisor. I thought I knew what a storyboard artist's job was until I started my first job at DreamWorks Feature, and I realized there's a lot more to a story artist's role beyond just the artistry of storyboarding. And I learned that a big part of the work was not creative at all. Now the only disadvantage of this is you only learn a bit from the actual job and the pipeline maybe only learn a studio specific way of working. And something I want to bring up, learning on the job, like learning something completely new, was more common years ago, where entry level Disney animators came in with basically no animation knowledge, but had decent drawing skills, they were trained how to animate as they were hired. Nowadays, the competition is so high that they expect entry level artists to have decent enough skill close to an artist that has years of experience. Also, not everyone is going to have this opportunity. The next one is philosophy and theory based. You're told certain ways of thinking and how to approach animation and drawing. So these are thought plans more so than how to's. Like how would I bring my character to life or how do I make things look more organic? How do I break certain rules? So your mindset, thought process and approach is constantly challenged. Now the pros to this is that it's mind opening. It allows you to think beyond good or bad animation and it makes it even more unique when you can start actively thinking why you're doing certain things. 
Like when I was a student, animating acting was probably one of the hardest things I had to learn. But one thing that really helped me as a beginning animator was prioritizing how to emulate life, how to think about making this character come to life. So things like breathing, a character looking around, attitude. And it changed my way in how to approach performance. So these things can be life-changing. Now the cons to this is that some theories and philosophies form, they can form stupid rules and it doesn't stick all the time. And some of these theories and rules must be broken for different situations. These are just really food for thought. They're more supplemental than anything. Like you can't just become a good, talented animator by just learning a bunch of theories and sharing thought processes and philosophies. You kind of have to mix it with something else. The next one is tutorial videos, following a step-by-step -step tutorial, online or offline. There are many tutorial videos online, especially on websites like YouTube, and it's all free. Want to learn how to animate dancing? You can find that. Want to learn how to use Blender or some animation software? There's a lot of step-by-step -step tutorials for that. Online tutorials are high demand. Now the pros, there's a lot. The more the merrier, different flavors and different executions. Most of it is free too. It's a great way to understand one's workflow, especially if you're watching a step-by-step -step tutorial. I personally love video tutorials because I learned a bit about, let's say the tool or the software or how someone thinks while making the art. They can also be pretty specific to your needs. So if you're trying to look for, let's say, how to animate a dog run cycle or a human walk cycle, there's a lot on that. Or maybe you just wanna learn how to model donuts. Now, the cons to this is there is a lot, so that can also be overwhelming. Like I said, step-by-step -step tutorials are high in demand, so there's a lot of different people getting into it, some made by professionals and some made by hobbyists or students or someone who isn't related in the industry. I personally think this is a good thing because there's also multiple different perspectives. However, this also includes the quality of the tutorials, some being funny, some being decent, some being rudimentary or too simple or just putting you in the wrong direction. And because the space is so unlimited, there are highly popular tutorials about animation and drawing that like a massive community could also spread misinformation. So if you're following a series of tutorials, I would advise really understanding who's giving it, where they're from, what's their experience, what do you like about their lessons, do they inspire you, do their thoughts match with yours? And I think that's all that matters. The next one is books, you know, reading books that talk about animation. And the prime example to this is Richard Williams' Animation Survival Kit. There will be talk of maybe theories, histories of character animation, or just pure reference. Now, for me, the benefits to this is I personally treat these more like guides or like the Animation Survival Kit titles suggests a survival kit. So if I forgot how to animate a dog walk cycle or a horse gait, I can see how someone like Dick Williams could break it down. Now the cons to this is that in order to learn and to get better at animation, you have to really do the animation work. You can't just look at books, read it, understand why things work, but not apply it at all. It's so much easier said than done. Like it's easier to be told how to do something, you nod your head, but when you go and do it, you kind of forget. You learn by doing. So in order to grasp these concepts, you have to actually apply it to your own work. And maybe you'll realize some of these things don't work for you at all. And honestly, that's the problem I have with people that just spout out, look at the animation survival kit. It's gonna make you a great animator. This is a great way to learn animation. Well, you actually have to do the practice. Now, the last one I'm gonna talk about, and if you know my channel, you're probably gonna know what I'm gonna say, which is a personal project. A personal project could be a short film, a small animated skit, or maybe some scenes, or maybe small animated assets for a game or some form of mixed media. Now the pro to this is that you learn how to actually make things. Like that's so important. Like not many people can say that they made a short film or a short cartoon. There's a lot of people in the industry that can't say that. If it's a personal project, it showcases your identity, your voice, your style. A short film, for example, requires so many other skills like planning, storyboarding, utilizing different software, writing if it's story driven. You can also target areas where you'd like to improve or things you'd like to learn. Like if a project has sweeping camera moves that are in 3D, it's probably a good excuse to learn how to use Blender or Maya or 3D Studio Max. If your film has a wolf, for example, but you don't know how to animate wolves, it's a great way to challenge yourself to learn how to animate wolves. Now, the disadvantage to this is that while you can make projects to learn something, that also means you have to go out of your way to make that effective. You know, books, theories, tutorials. You have to do all that legwork to find the one that best suits your current needs. And if you're not experienced enough, you're not going to know what to look for. And it can be so daunting and overwhelming. And because of that, most people stick to what they know and what's comfortable for them. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with that, but you're only just going to get better at something you're already good at, where you can also learn something new if you really wanted to. But that's really just a matter of choice. And the point of personal projects is that they're yours. 
So these are all the different venues and ways in how I learned animation. But you're probably asking, what is the best way to learn animation? And like, what would be my top choice and venue here? Honestly speaking, and only if you can, I think if you're trying to learn or master something, you should probably try all these venues out. And you're gonna gain a lot of different perspectives from each of them. I personally think that your improvement is much slower if you're only learning it from one perspective. But that's not to say that you shouldn't value one venue over the other, because I personally do. Like for me, I value personal projects because I have ownership and I have stories and visions I want to share. I'll sit in, in classes, I'll be a part of online community discussions, I'll watch tutorials. Sometimes I learn more by teaching it, but I think it's all really up to you. So if you're someone who loves to make personal stuff, you know, I would prioritize personal projects. If you're someone that actually wants guidance, I would take up classes. I would be part of online communities. I would look for mentorships. But I truly believe that if you dabble in a bit of different things and you mix them up, that just opens your scope. Anyways, that's all I'm gonna talk about, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.